you know, with this misogynistic interpretation of the Bible, it, she's a Jezebel or she's a Delilah. Delilah ain't the problem. Why? Because Delilah wasn't the one with the God-given instructions for a God-given assignment. The problem wasn't Delilah being who she was. The problem was Samson not being who he was. She, she was acting in a way that was consistent with her identity. The hooker was acting in a way that was consistent with her identity. It was Samson who forgot who he was. He's a Nazarite. I know I'm getting in trouble now. Please understand, you, you, you know who you are. You're a Christian. You're a believer. You're a faith walker. And, and it don't matter what anybody else, they can cuss you out. They can say all manner of evil against you. They can lie. They can do whatever you, it doesn't matter who they are if you know who you are. God help me today. You ain't got to prove nothing to nobody because people who don't understand you won't settle for proof and people who know you don't need it. Uh, Meacham, they're not ready for this with it. Yeah, yeah. People who, who, who don't know you won't settle for you proving it so why are you trying to prove you don't need people's approval to be who God called you to be you were born pre-approved
things toward me and nothing is an accident I'm alive because there's more God knows the plans he has for me he knows the thoughts he thinks toward me and nothing is an accident I'm alive I'm alive, I'm alive, I'm alive, I'm alive, and this is not an accident, I'm alive, because there's
Well, listen, if you know that Jesus has risen, if you know that he is alive, can you give God a great praise all over this sanctuary? Come on. If you're watching on stream and you know that Jesus is alive, can you give God a great praise? If you don't know by now, hey, if you're glad to be in the sanctuary where you haven't been in a long time, can you give God, if you're just glad to be alive, can you give God a good praise? Because the reality is, we serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living whatever people say. I see his hand of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's always there. He lives. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me. He talks with me. A long life's never he lives, <laughs> he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives, he woke me up this morning. He put food on the table, he put running in my shoes, he put clapping in my hands, he put joy in my heart. You ask me how I know he lives, he healed my body, he gave strength to my limbs. You ask me how I know he lives? Because when I woke up this morning, I woke up clothed and in my right mind. You ask me how I know he lives? Because I looked at my hands and my hands look new. I looked at my feet and they did too. So if you know he lives, I know you got a mask on. But at home, you ain't got nothing on. So let the redeemed of the Lord open up your mouth and give God. If you're on Zoom, open up your mouth. Let us see you clapping your hands because you know that the Lord, I see you on Facebook. I see you saying he lives. I see you writing he lives. Come on. You ain't been in here in 13 months. You ought to just shout. Because God kept you. And held you. And sustained you. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. So this is the day. That the Lord has made, we will rejoice and be glad. Hey, hey, Woo! hallelujah! Listen, for the last 13 months, we've been doing this by ourselves. The praise team, the band, us. And every now and then we'd get a good dance and we wouldn't be able to look at nobody. We'd just be dancing by ourselves. But since I got a crowd this morning, since some of y'all feet ain't got light in about 14 months, and Bishop, while we're here, since we're here, since we're here, we might as we well, might as well, give God, take the about Lord. 120 seconds. I know you're out of practice, but it's like riding a bike. You ought to go and give him a. I see y'all clapping on Zoom. I 
see me on Facebook, you might as well go and give it to me. You just had to. All right, y'all. Y'all stop. We'll be here all day. We'll be here all day. We got a bunch of Zoomers watching. Lord have mercy. There they go. There they go. Break it down real quick. So I don't know, I don't know if y'all are, are basketball fans, but last night was one of the best games I'd ever seen for two teams I don't even care about, UCLA and Gonzaga. And sports for me that I don't really watch unless Bishop is watching, but when I tell you, that was a good game. That was a good game. So they went into overtime and Grant Hill said, it's been this good it would be a shame for it to have to end this quick. He said, something this good deserves overtime. That praise was so good, I think it deserves a little overtime. So we're gonna give you another minute of overtime to thank God for his goodness, 
his grace and his love and to thank God that Jesus is alive. Facebook. I see y'all on Zoom giving God the praise. I see you. Joyce, you driving. Don't hurt yourself. if you can. So listen, we welcome everybody that's watching on Facebook. Hey, hit the share button. If you're watching on Facebook, hit that share button. Because if we just starting like this, you know what it's going to be like. Hit the share button. Everybody watching on the website. To everybody watching on YouTube and to all our Zoomers. Bishop Senior and First Lady. We got to give God a shout for the healing of Bishop Senior. Yeah, Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> so listen, we're not doing a whole bunch of announcements, but one thing we've got to do right up front. God has blessed through the years um, this church with an amazing team, amazing staff, amazing ministry. Um, but I say without fear of contradiction. I, I, I say without fear of judgment. And you can debate me that the greatest children's pastor on the planet has been Pastor Rosemary Winbush. No doubt about that. No doubt about that. And I thank God that she's not the only servant in the house because the amazing men's pastor of this church is Pastor Wyman who has served our men so strong and faithfully that they, they, they are just one of the most faithful couples 
you will find anywhere. I mean, anywhere. Um, the book of Ecclesiastes says it's a time and a season for everything. Um, and we know that God works in seasons. He doesn't work in cycles. He works in seasons. You'll get that later. And so, um, something has been in the works for a while. Rosemary has been talking to me, talking to me, and then Wyman talked to me and talked to me. Um, but they are resigning as children's pastor and men's pastor. They're not leaving Bethel. Y'all relax. But they have an amazing ministry, Kairos. Um, and, and they feel that God has put them in a season of intentionality. Um, Wyman, you may not know, travels not just with IBM and with the Navy, but he travels all over doing leadership um, all over the place in the marketplace and even in churches. And Rosemary does the same with him uh, and just hadn't been able to be with him like she won't. So Wyman said, you better quit that church and get on the road. That's with what me. he said. <laughs> no, he didn't really. He didn't really say that. Um, but I need you very clear that they're not leaving, they're not going anywhere, they'll still be engaged. But because they believe that this is the season um, where God is calling them to that intentional marketplace ministry that they've already had and doing incredible with, even with couples, um, they felt this was the season um, to slip out. And so I want both of them just come here because I'm gonna pray with them can we salute the wind bushes? Yeah. I don't know, uh, because Wyman's dad lives with them now, so they may have to slip out um, before. So now, so you're saying, well, so what you gonna do? What we gonna do? Well, but God always has a ram in the bush. He yeah. always sends. Well, this ram really ain't been in the bush because both these people have been working with them. And both of these new pastors were recommendations of them. Uh, and so I, I'm going to ask these couples, and I want to introduce you to these new pastors on our team. Our new children's pastor is Reverend Barry Young. And I want Karma to join him up here. We're going to pray with them. And man, this one, I'm trying not to cry. This one really... This one, I, I mean, I, I don't know if anybody has a servant's heart um, like this person. I really don't. I'm trying not to cry. Um, our new men's pastor, he just, he's finishing his religion degree and going right into seminary with his MDiv. Our new men's pastor is Reverend Kendall Oliver. <laughs> Tammy, come up here with him. I, I, we know Kendall and, Kendall and Tammy's heart yes, yes. probably more than we know just about anybody's heart in this church um, because of how faithfully um, they have served us and loved us uh, and when Wyman said it it was in my spirit and Wyman said it to me and it was like okay that's confirmation so we're in this pandemic, and so I can't do what we would normally do. But today, I'm officially elevating Barry and Kendall to elder status. The elder Young, Elder Oliver, our new children's and men's pastor. So here's what I need you to do. Stretch your hands towards them for me. God, I, I thank you for faithful servants in a, in a day and time and culture where selfishness seems to be the norm. Thank you that these three couples that stand before me represent what it means to have servants' hearts. I thank you for Wyman and Rosemary Winbush. I thank you for their heart their spirit, their mind, their amazing love for you that has been manifested in their love for this church. 
and now God as you are shifting their season of ministry I speak favor that now the name of the ministry is coming to pass this is their chirotic moment lives are going to be changed because of them marriages and men and women people in the marketplace I, 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 I thank you for them and God I I, I, I I know your word is true when we've been faithful over the few you make us ruler over many and so oftentimes we only use that about heaven but I believe it applies to earth so because they have been faithful I believe you're about to elevate them in ways they have never seen you're about to bring blessings upon their life in ways they have never seen God I thank you today for their children I I thank you today oh God for how you have blessed them to see their children grow into a young man into young ladies who love the Lord and we thank you oh God for the ministry and the purpose that you have placed them into I thank you for their families on today oh God I pray a special prayer for Wyman's father today that healing is the children's bread that's what your words declares and so God strengthen him on every side open up creativity to Wyman and to Rosemary as they step into this new season let them begin to see unlimited blessings come forth in ministry and in their home and in their family today and now God for, for Barry and for for Kendall and for Karma and for Tammy and for their children I thank you for their heart I thank you for how they have served I thank you oh God for their marriages and on today I am reminded of that leader that came to your son that needed a touch for his servant and told Jesus you don't have to come to my house just speak a word and so because I can't put my hands on them today as their bishop oh God I just speak a word and I ask that their faith receive the word that you elevate we elevate them now God today help them not to take the title too seriously it's a man given title and so God help them that while they may be given this elevated title by man help them to continue to walk in the only title that matters servant i pray over our children's ministry and our men's ministry that now it will explode even beyond where it has been under wyman and rosemary thank you for children that are going to come to the saving knowledge of jesus christ thank you for children who will begin to understand what it means to be a child and love jesus thank you for families that will come to this church because of the amazing ministry that happens for their children thank you today thank you for Barry and give him creativity and discernment oh God thank you for Kendall and I declare that men are going to begin to further take their rightful place that men under his leadership and his teaching and his guidance will come to know who they are husbands will be drawn to you you. men will be drawn to you not just the men who are in the church but I declare men who are rocking it in the streets will come and rock it in the church the drug dealer the gang banger the one who's come back from the prison the one who gave up on church the one who got sick of church the drunk I declare that men are going to be drawn into this place and we give your name the praise for it in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name we pray every believer says amen amen elder young elder Oliver we bless God on you all on today pastor Rosemary pastor Wyman I ain't saying nothing because you ain't going nowhere I'll just see y'all later Come on, let's thank God for them this morning. Give God praise for them this morning. Hallelujah. Take your seats. Hey!
We got something for y'all. Ooh. Oh, I see now. Oh, okay. yeah. We got my... something for you. Here's how you know you get old because you have to take your glasses off and really see what you want to see. I don't know a Zoom, Facebook, website. Y'all ready for this? I don't know a better Sunday than Resurrection Sunday. Because resurrection represents when God raised up somebody government tried to kill. Ooh, I, I, I got light in my come feet on, right on, there. Come on, Bishop. The Roman government tried to kill Jesus. Resurrection is God telling the government, you can't kill who I put my hands on. Guess who's in church today? Ex X don't work for me. I've never used that word. Never. Congresswoman Corrine Brown is in the house. <laughs> what? Hey, we got to give God a real shout for that, y'all. We got to give God a real. Ain't no media. Ain't nothing like that. They've been trying to find her. But we got her in church looking good. Baby, baby, look at that fancy mask she has on. You see on. that look fancy mask look she got on today? Come on, can we really we shout celebrate, celebrate. that our congresswoman is in the house today? <laughs> Woo! Ain't nobody mad but the devil. Me, me, hey, Congresswoman Meacham got his flag right there. His fan, Corrine delivers <laughs> in Jesus' name. What better Sunday than Resurrection Sunday? For her to be in the house Amen. Amen. on today. Ain't nobody mad but the devil. And he wasn't coming to church anyway. So listen, uh, just a couple of quick things and we're going we gonna to move. Um, this is Autism Month. And uh, we, we're doing some special things that I want you to tell everybody in here and watching us about. So this is Autism Awareness Month. And we want to salute Mia Baldwin, who so eloquently and passionately advocates yeah. for autism because her son is autistic and so for this month we want everybody to bring an unwrapped toy don't go home and try to wrap it an unwrapped toy and place it in the receptacles that will be outside and so the center car the center for autism and related disabilities are asking that we bring unwrapped toys to uh, bring about awareness for autism so we're asking that you do that when you bring your ties even if you're not bringing your tithes every Sunday between 10 and 12 on Sundays bring an unwrapped toy and drop it in the receptacles that will be outside right so uh, that's everybody who's who's listening as well you see the flyer uh, we do it every year we didn't do it last year um, but we want to be a blessing and so um, we, we're going to even I think one Sunday Jocelyn's gonna decorate the pulpit uh, and so we want to make sure that we are because the last year has taught us how to be a church that gives a church that does for the community we've learned that over the last year and uh yesterday was absolutely amazing again on yesterday y'all we were able to bless so many different families all right mia i got your text um <clears throat> this see, last year this kind of what we do it almost like we ain't in church i'm just talking to folk but no but what she sent me is important um uh, yesterday we were able you see it the video now we were able to be a blessing to so many uh 650 families we blessed on yesterday right here yes. at the church but then because of your faithful giving and how much we had uh groceries and the like we were able to go to these agencies and bless Clara White Mission, the Sulzbacher Center, the Sulzbacher Village, Gateway, City Rescue, Hubbard House, Boys and Girls Club and Families. We were able to bless all of those agencies on top of the 650 families because of how faithful you are uh, in your giving. And so that's what we that's what we've done and we thank God for that I got my notes here y'all in case you're wondering uh, and so we thank God for that now uh, Mia wants me to remind everybody and and I think it's worth it um, agape uh, where she holds leadership they are doing vaccinations how many y'all got in in the sanctuary how many y'all got your shot 
Look at y'all. All right now, look at y'all. So if you've got family, um, Edward Waters is doing shots today from nine to five. Um, nine to five. Now, y'all done started something because y'all in this sanctuary. Now, I got to go back next Sunday walking in here and it's empty like the empty tomb of Jesus Christ. So, so I said, you know, so I need everybody to get vaccinated so we can come back to church. Um, you know, I know a lot of churches are opening and I'm not, I'm not knocking anybody. I'm not judging anybody. I don't pastor there. So if that's what the Lord has led anybody to do to fully open, that's fine. As for me and this house, we're, we're just going to follow the science and I'm going to listen to the spirit. And every now and then we're going to drop in stuff like this to test and make sure. But I need y'all to get them shots so we can open this church all the way back up and have, have a good church. Amen. So 9 to 5 today, y'all, make sure that you uh, do that. Listen, um, this past week has been amazing with prayer, hasn't it? Oh my goodness, that 714 declaration. Is this a praying woman for all y'all that's been on the prayer? This is a praying woman right here. I mean a praying woman. And uh, it, it was an amazing week. The Lord led me to that last week to call the church into prayer. And so what we're going to do, Z, I see Z right there. What we're going to do starting tomorrow, our intercessors will go back to our daily prayers, but we're going to keep 714. I, I, God just said, stay on that until I heal the land. Stay on that. This land needs healing, racism, political polarity, misogyny, uh, crime. Mur this land needs healing. And God said, stay on that 714. One of the things I asked everybody to do, that's, that I haven't said this in so long. Jesus, Linwood, could you pull that receptacle out for me? Put it. I ain't said that and I don't even know how to act telling folk to pull it. You can just put it right there, Linwood. Yeah, that's good. And let's get this one over here. Linwood, get that one for me over there. You just get a little exercise. Get your steps in. Get your steps in. Bring that one. Just put it right there. I haven't said that in so long. Um, I can't begin to tell you, thank you so much, how amazing your giving has been over the last year. The things we've been able to do. Because you have been so faithful in the sanctuary those of you watching me on facebook all of my zoom i, I like this all of my zoom uh, everybody uh, you have been absolutely um absolutely so faithful in your giving i asked everyone that would today we know that sowing of seed is a statement of faith and there are people who are bringing their tithes um and so you can bring it now don't think you're gonna get in church if you bring your tithe at this point you're gonna sneak in you just bring your tithe if you normally bring it the trustees are outside but i asked everybody to bring a declaration seed i've got mine in my pocket on behalf of our family a declaration seed that everything we have prayed about and for god is already bringing it to pass and i told everybody that the lord laid on my heart and this is what he laid on my heart i, I don't i don't argue with god anymore when god says something i do it Tell the people to bring a seed of $714. Then the Lord said to me, and those that just aren't able, because there's some people who are not able, tell them to do a seed of $71.14. That's on top of your tithe. $714 seed. You're not able to do that? $71.14. For everybody that's watching me, for every partner that's watching me, for everybody in the sanctuary, Put our giving platforms up on the screen. Y'all have gotten used to this now. Most of us in here give that way. I'm old school. I write a check. I just, I believe in writing a check for the Lord. I don't know what that is. Ain't nothing spiritual. I made it spiritual. I, I just made it spiritual. I believe you ought to write a check for the Lord. It just sounds spiritual. Ain't nothing spiritual to it. Um, but these are our giving platforms this morning. Um, Y'all give a shout for Jer Jerome and his team were up here late last night. No, I'm serious. They were up here late last night setting all of this up. And uh, y'all don't know the stuff that goes on behind the scenes, man. And so uh, want, so if you see folk like Rondi's running over there, they working stuff. They're doing stuff. Because this is what we do on Sundays. 
So we ain't gonna change just cause y'all are here. We gonna do what we do. Um, uh, all right, yeah, they got that working. Something happened to the Zoom. Okay. Hey, if you're on Zoom, don't go. No, no they back up, Jay, I see them. They back up. Zoom? They can't see me? Okay, well, if you hear me on, they can hear me. Can you hear me? So if you hear me on Zoom, don't go anywhere. We had a little technical difficulty this first time doing it. So, you know, we got to work on it a little bit, get it going. Uh, hey, Antoinette, I see you waving. You can see me, Antoinette? Antoinette says she can see me. Jerome say you can't see me. Now, I don't know how Latanya he Latanya is saying no. Latanya, you're supposed to be up here serving. What I you doing? Oh, look, look. oh, on Facebook. Okay, cool in the game. But if you can hear me, that's cool. Because I need y'all to get that seed offering too. So put that, put the giving platforms back up for all of you in the sanctuary. You know those. Now, if you are a giver through your tithe or if you're going to sow that seed in your tithe, I want you to just come and put it uh, in one of these receptacles uh, on this morning. We've got this new, uh, this new way of giving with Givelify. Y'all put that QR. Is it QR? Yeah, there it is. Let me tell you what's deep about this. Y'all see that? All you have to do, and this is real, if you're in the sanctuary, you want to give on Givelify, you just have to point your camera uh, towards the screen. Yeah, can you do it? And enlarge it. And if you're watching online, put the QR code back up. There you go. You just point your camera towards it and givelify automatically comes up in our you'll see it at the top you hit it and bethel's givelify automatically comes up you can do that now y'all keep it up why does it keep going away y'all keep that up from oh it's looping is that what it's doing it's acting loopy okay um so all you have to do now i don't know how far away it works they were supposed to test it this morning i don't know if they got a chance to do that for those in the sanctuary but you who are watching anybody able to get pull it up in here y'all got it look at there look at there and so i want us to prepare to give this morning and then right after that we're going to do communion because the choir is going to slay us and then i'm going to preach so we're going to do communion now so if you're watching on facebook on the website on youtube get your communion ready because we're going to do it uh right after this this giving moment and of course you can give anytime throughout the worship service that's the beauty of this virtual space but if you're in here this morning and you want to bring uh your tithe if you are a giver through the envelope then we just put these here for you to go ahead and bring them down we're not going to pass the trays because of cdc regulation that's why you picked up your communion out front because we're trying to be as safe and, and smart as possible. So one more time, put the giving platforms up for, for me so everybody can make sure that they have the giving platforms again. Our Cash App, our Givelify, uh, our Text to Give. If you're on the website, you can go right there and give. And of course, you give anytime throughout the worship experience. Let's get ready for the Lord's Supper. Let's get ready for the Lord's Supper. You all have you all have your yeah. I see y'all shaking them. You got them. All right. When we're done with them, just don't you know? Just kind of leave them, leave them there. Watching on stream, I'll give you a minute to get yours. Give you a minute to get yours. I see some of y'all. Got the QR code. I see you on Facebook. All right. The word of the Lord says that on the night that our Lord, Savior, and Savior Jesus Christ was betrayed, he took bread and blessed it, took the cup likewise and gave it unto them, told them, this is my body broken for you. Then he said, this is my blood shed for the remission of sin. If you have yours this morning, I want you to just stand with me in the sanctuary. If you don't mind at home to do the same. I thank God for his body that was broken. I thank God for his blood that was shed. That old Florida mass choir song said, it was the blood that made the difference. At Calvary, 
the blood that came streaming down for me it was the blood yeah, that made the difference at Calvary anybody thankful for the blood today and so on that faithful night hallelujah Thank you, God. As the Lord Jesus told those disciples on that night, I say to each of us, let us eat together. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. <laughs> I know it was the blood I know it was the blood I know we gotta go I know it was the blood For me one day when I was lost, he died on that cross. We got to go. And I know it was the blood. The blood came streaming down. I thought I had a Baptist church. The blood came streaming down. Blood came streaming down. For me One day When I was lost He died Didn't he die On that cross Woo! And I know it was blood. He's coming back again we're going to take it in a minute. He's coming back again. It's been 13 months, y'all. He's coming back again for me. One day when I was lost, he died on the cross. And I know it was the blood. Let us drink together. I know it was the blood. I know it was the I feel my daddy on me. I know it was the blood for I know you got to sing behind the mask, but just do the best you can. One day. I know I better see y'all singing on Zoom Come on Just see. 
bless us. Go ahead and take your seat. You can bring that seat anytime. Come on, choir. your hands right there in your seat. Everybody clap. Song says, let's celebrate our king. He's the ruler of everything. Let's lift his name on high. Come on Zion. Praise our King. Everybody sing. Let's celebrate. I celebrate. Our He's the ruler King. of everything. He's the ruler of everything. Let's lift His name on high. Let's lift Him up. Come on, Zion. We praise our King. Oh, all right. Say, He's worthy of our worthy of our. He's the Lord God and. Of He's the Lord God and ancient Let's of days. lift his name on high. Let's lift him up. Come on, Zion. We praise our King. He's awesome and glorious, excellent King. He's worthy of all of our praise. Matchless and glorious. Let's lift him up. Come on, Zion. We praise yeah. our King. Let's celebrate our King. He's the ruler of heaven. Let's lift his name on. Let's high. lift him up. Come on, Zion. We praise our King. And he's worthy of our praise. Have I got a witness? He's the Lord God in ancient of He's the Lord God in ancient of Let's lift his name on. Let's lift him up. Come on, Zion. Keep your hands. Hey, he's awesome and glorious. Excellent King, He's worthy of all of our praise. Matchless and glorious, say. Let's, let's go. Up, come on, Zion. We praise our Righteous King. Righteous and glorious, ever victorious. He's reigning over us. He's a great God. Righteous and glorious, ever You want to stand up and celebrate He's with us. He's reigning over us. He's a great God. Righteous and glorious. Victorious, he's reigning over us. He's a great God, say righteous and glorious, ever victorious. Now, can we have a praise for him? He's a great God, he's a great God. Wave your hands if you know it is great. He's a great God. I say, wave your hands if you know it is great. He's a great God. I say, wave your hands if you know it is great. He's a great God. Clap your hand if you know that he's great. He's a great God. Clap your hand if you know that he's great. He's a great God. He's a great God. He's a great God. He's a great God. Take it up. He's a great God. Hey, he's a great God. He's a great God. He's the Lord strong and mighty. He's a great God. He's the Lord mighty and No! 
Can y'all help me thank God for our worship and arts ministry under the wonderful leadership of Meech and Clark. Come on, can we celebrate the creativity, the musicality, the diversity? Come on, I know y'all ain't been in church in a long time, but can we, what you saw right there was top notch, absolutely top notch. Hallelujah. I see you clapping on Zoom. God, thank you now. Release your word in this place. <laughs> thank you for a risen Savior. God, today, if there's anybody watching that does not know this risen Lord of ours, then today let them make a decision that will change the rest of their life. Use me for your pleasure today. Anoint me afresh. Consecrate me anew. In Jesus' name. Amen. Take your Bibles. Watching on stream. If you're in the, I hadn't said this in 14 months. If you're in the sanctuary, stand with me. Take your Bibles. Y'all going to make it hard going back empty next week. Is. for those of you watching if you just tuned in on Facebook share share your screen so that others will join in with us Philippians chapter 3 beginning at verse 1 I'm reading from the New International Version though I myself have reasons for such confidence if someone else thinks they have reasons to put confidence in the flesh I have more circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel of the tribe of Benjamin a Hebrew of Hebrews in regard to the law a Pharisee as for zeal persecuting the church as for righteousness based on the lie on the law faultless but whatever were gains to me I now consider loss for the sake of Christ what is more I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord for whose sake I have lost all things I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ and be found in him not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law but that which is through faith in Christ the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith here it is I want to know Christ yes to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings becoming like him in his death and so somehow attaining to the resurrection of the dead I just like that King James that I may know him <laughs> and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being conformed to his death you may be seated in the presence of our God once again to all of our streaming family we thank God for your faithfulness every week and to everybody that made it in the sanctuary this morning we give God praise I want to preach this morning about becoming the me I was meant to be becoming the me now you know y'all got masks on, you cannot take them off, so that means you got to yell louder. <laughs> when, when, preachers, when preachers talk about uh, preaching, one, one of the things we admit is that the hardest days to preach are those special days on the Christian calendar, like Mother's Day, Father's Day, and even Easter. Um, and the irony, the irony of it is, in a very transparent moment, the irony of it is preaching is only made possible because of Easter. And yet, because Easter is only one story, it's made challenging to try to do it over and over every year. We often hear people who love church. And I saw it all on Facebook all yesterday and, and this morning. We hear it all the time that it's the job of the preacher to get him up on Easter. And the reality is, I tell preachers all the time, if that's all you do, then you have failed in your preaching. 
to be very clear now there is enough simply in the resurrection of Jesus to preach there is but at the end of the day real preaching is not simply telling the story of what happened in the Bible but it's talking about what it means for life today it's not simply about what happened early on Sunday morning but what it means for us every morning Paul lets us know here that real resurrection power has a result and the result of resurrection power is change because here's the reality the life of faith can't just be about church it has to be about change I can find something else to do with my Sunday y'all been gone a long time so y'all not happy over here I'll come back see too too many of us want to have church but we don't want change we want celebration void of transformation but if resurrection is going to mean anything to you it can't just be knowing the story it's got to be knowing what the story means to appropriate it in your life if Paul were to be interviewed I, I think based upon the verses I've read to you today Paul would tell us that he had some expectations and that he was living them out only to discover that the expectations he was living out were not a part of the expectations he was born to fulfill he he was Paul tells us in these verses he was being somebody he wasn't born to be and what changed it Paul says what changed it was Jesus and the power of his resurrection See, resurrection power gives you the strength you need to become who you were born to be. It gives you what you need to fight through the change that comes with the shift. Because, let's be honest, it's not easy becoming who you were meant to be, especially when who you have been is who you thought you were supposed to be. <laughs> um, change isn't easy I heard about three amens behind those masks change isn't easy we don't like change I mean when you have a set expectation based on who you think you are and when you try to meet expectations of those who think they can tell you who you are it takes a power to crucify who you have been in order to raise who you can become. Preach Rudolph McKissick. Let me say that one more time. It takes a power to crucify who you have been in order to raise who you can be. See, for me, Easter and resurrection is not just about saving my life as far as my destination, but it's also about changing my life as far as my destiny. It's not just about getting my soul saved, and it is about that first, but it's not just about getting my soul saved to get me to a place called heaven, but it's also about getting my life right to get me into a purpose on earth. We are called to live, I feel like preaching, in resurrection power. I'm going to say that one more time. We are called to live in resurrection power. And he got up so you could get up. He got up so you could live up. He got up woo, to lift you up. He got up to bring you up. He got up to free you up. And he got up to set you up to live on the power of resurrection and walk in the purpose of your life. Paul here is talking to the church which has been inundated with religious Judaizers. These were, these were Christians 
who believed their Jewish formulation and their Jewish foundation was more important than this new Christian foundation. They, they were people, they, they, they were like folk who say, you ain't saved if you ain't Baptist, or you ain't saved if you ain't apostolic, or you ain't saved if you, uh, you know, you ain't got the Holy Ghost. Those were Judaizers who said that you had to have a certain thing in order to be in the church. Judaizers were trying to convince people that they had to be circumcised, especially men. They were trying to convince the church that they had to keep certain Judaic laws in order to be right with God, namely circumcision. They, they were people, Judaizers were people who wanted outward signs. But Paul is telling the church that it's not about outward signs, but about inward transformation. And inward transformation is manifested in outward signs. See, I don't know how nasty you are because of what you do. I only see what you do because you nasty inside. Because whatever is in you is manifested outside of you. Preach, boy. It's not just action, but attitude as a matter of fact it's attitude first that translates into actions so you want to tell me i don't know why they so mean yes you do because they mean inside i don't know why they so nasty because they nasty inside paul is trying to tell them it's got to start with an inner transformation and in and in his effort to get the church to trust his pastoral wisdom over those manipulative leaders who were Judaizers, he begins to compare his resume and portfolio to theirs. And he said, listen, you decide who you won't listen to. He said, but before you decide, let me tell you about me. Born on the eighth day. I'm a Hebrew of Hebrews. That means he's, he's the baddest kind of Jew. He said, if anybody knows the law, don't nobody know it like me. He starts running down his resume. But then Paul says, but everything on there, I'm a Hebrew of Hebrews. I'm a Pharisaic Jew. I was taught at the feet of Gamaliel, the greatest Grecian philosopher and educator you could find. I'm a Hebraic Jew. I'm on the Sanhedrin Council. But then Paul says, but none of that was who I was born to be. Jesus. He says, when I met Jesus. <laughs> Some phrases just sound right, don't they? He said, when I met Jesus, I discovered who I was meant to be. And now my only aim is to be that and to know him. I need you to get the juxtaposition in the story and in the chapter. He said, I'm a Hebrew of Hebrews. I know the letter of the law. I'm an educated Jew who happens to also be a Roman soldier. I'm in the Sanhedrin council. Here's what Paul was saying. I know a lot of things, but I want to know him. I know a lot of doctrine, but I want to know him. I know a lot of scripture, but I want to know him. I know a lot of church stuff but I want to know him and on this resurrection Sunday that ought to be your testimony your goal and your expectation to get to know the you you were meant to be as you get to know him because in getting to know him I will get to know me and I will become the me that I was meant to be I don't want to get to know more church I want to get to know him I don't want to get to know more dogma I want to get to know him I don't want to get to know what it means to be Baptist I want to get to know what it means to know him I want to know him and the power of his re resurrection it becomes the defining central priority because y'all life is too complex to live by lists of priorities I got priority over here for this and priority in this area and priority in that no no Paul, Paul said, the one thing that ought to give definition to your life is getting to know him and the power of his resurrection. And every other priority grows out 
of that central focus. I see y'all writing on there. Yeah, I see you, Adonica. I want to know him. I see you, jo I want to know him. I, I see I see Miss Hannah up there with me. I, I want to know him. I wonder if there's anybody even in the sanctuary today that can say, I ain't trying to learn all that other stuff. I want to know him. I want to know Jesus and him crucified and live in the power of his resurrection to be who I'm supposed to be. That once you meet Jesus, the old me no longer matters. I'm over the old me. Now here's what's deep. Sometimes the old me wasn't a bad me. It just wasn't the right me preach boy see whenever we hear this stuff about the old me we always think about the sin in me the drinking me the hoe in me the cussing me the getting high in me yeah y'all done got quite y'all i ain't changed in 14 months but every now and then the challenge is how do i change that me when that me wasn't a bad me it just wasn't the right me and i gotta preach this because the enemy will spend all of his time trying to either take me back to the old me or make me regret becoming the real me and the only way to fight that is resurrection power so let me tell you what Paul says I ain't gonna keep you long I know y'all got home get home and get your Easter dinner here it is Paul said when you when you live in resurrection power and when you become the you you were meant to be you develop forward thinking, never looking backward. Now, we know the familiar phrase from this passage, the, the most familiar phrase from this passage, forgetting those things that are behind me. That, that, that's, that's the one we know. But when he says that a little later in this chapter, that is simply a recapitulated summation of what he said in verse 7. Y'all like that? That's really what that, when he says, forgetting those things that are behind me, I press. That is really simply him in a poetic prose that becomes a, summa a summation and recapitulation of what he's already said in verse 7. Paul, Paul, Paul says, verses 4 through 7, I thought I had the right life. I thought I had the good life until I met Jesus and discovered my best life. Let me say that one more time. I thought I had a good life. I thought I had a right life. But when I met Jesus, living my best life, ain't going back and forth with my old self, living my best life. Y'all didn't know what I was going to say, did you? <laughs> Paul, Paul, Paul says, when you live in resurrection power after getting to know Jesus, you live knowing that what's in front of you is always better than what's behind you even when what's behind you wasn't bad see I'm trying to help some folk today who've had a pretty good life to know real success isn't about prizes but about purpose Paul had prizes Hebrew of Hebrews circumcised on the eighth day Sanhedrin council Taught by Gamaliel, which means he had, the, he had Ivy League education. Paul had prizes. But what Paul tells us here is he doesn't get stuck wishing or reminiscing. See, be careful always talking about I wish I could go back. I sure miss my college days. I wish I could go back to so and so. See, some people won't move on and go higher because they don't believe God can outdo God's self in their future. Ooh, that was so good. 
And so some folk are still stuck on the stuff they've done and what they have because they don't believe God can outdo himself in their future. But can I tell you today, the Bible says God is able, yes, to do exceedingly and abundantly above all you could ask and all you could think. You thought it couldn't get any better. And I want to talk to some folk in here who after 50, your youngest days might be behind you, but that don't mean your best days are behind you. I want to talk to somebody who had a great life, college life, young adult life. Your young days might be behind you, but that doesn't mean your best days are behind you. And here's how you forget. You wake up every day saying the best is yet Y'all going to make me preach. See, the enemy is trying to trick you into holding on to something in your past when God is getting ready to do greater in your future. That means you cannot hold me hostage to my, I don't care what you know about me. I don't care what you heard about me. I don't care if you think you got the facts about me. My future is greater than my past. You can't label me by my past because labels are for packages not for people so ain't no sense in you trying to label me I am not a slave to my past I am not enamored by my past here's what I want to tell somebody if you if you still in love with who you used to be if you still spend all your time recapitulating the folk all your accomplishments you are in love with your inferior self because I believe woo, that when I live in resurrection power what's ahead of me God I wish I had it's better than what's behind me. I, I ain't seen y'all in a long time, but I, I need somebody real quick to give God a what's ahead of me praise. That God, what's ahead of me is greater than what's behind. I will not get stuck. I will not get enamored. I will not fall in love with my inferior self because greater is coming. I see y'all waving your hands on Zoom. I see you. I see. I see you. I see you walking. Yes, I see you writing on Facebook. I, here's my second point. Here's my second point. Now, y'all not going to like this point, but if y'all give me time to work it, I promise you, this is going to be the shout. When I live in the power of resurrection, I learn how to celebrate my suffering. I just look at what Paul says Paul says I want to know him and the power of his resurrection and fellowship Jesus the New International Version says and participate in his suffering and become like him in his death translation I want to go through what he went through to be like him. I knew the one gonna shout. See, you can't, yes, you can't get to the resurrection. I'm, and by resurrection now, I mean the new you. The real you. The meant to be you. You, you can't get to that real you without first going through the suffering and the crucifixion crucifying the old you and suffering because folk don't like the new you now here's what that means come on let me teach it here's what that means if i'm gonna participate in his suffering that means oh y'all not gonna like this that means i have to live in the kind of faith that knows how to move in the direction of my obstacles huh I don't run from my obstacles because I know that in the suffering that comes with obstacles there is a pregnant potential for opportunity okay to get this I, I went too deep so let's make it real simple get this I need you 
to use your imagination to visualize Jesus on the way to the cross and on the cross. Y'all got it? You good? The cross was his obstacle. The cross was his suffering. But Jesus never blinked. He never turned back from it. Knowing it was coming. Oh, this is going to get good. His, his suffering. His suffering, the fellowship of his suffering. is not about just what went on on the cross. No. That's about the steps that led to the cross, which eventuated in his death. His suffering. Opposers. Haters. Destroyers. <laughs> betrayers. Misunderstanding disappointment all of that was his suffering even before the death so here was my question why would he go through all of that knowing it was coming it's one thing if I didn't know but if I know I'm going to catch hell, if I know it's going to be rough standing in my truth, if, if I know I'm going to have opposition and betrayers and haters and misunderstanding and disappointment and liars, if I know that's going to happen, he knew evil men were coming for him he knew there would be shame in his arrest he knew there would be pain on the cross and he could have turned around at many points he could have turned around in the garden he could have turned around at the supper he could have even gotten down up off that cross but he moved towards the suffering why here it is because jesus knew there was something on the other side of it that made this side worth it. See, I know I wasn't expecting y'all to shout on this kind of stuff right here. He saw the joy. He saw the attainment. He saw the fulfillment. But he couldn't get to none of that without going through the suffering. He saw the pleasure of God. But he couldn't get to that without going through the suffering. So he saw past the cross. Which allowed him to go to the cross. And let him go through. I came to tell somebody on stream or in the sanctuary resurrection power means I live through some things knowing that there's something on the other side can I preach to somebody today I don't care how bad it is right now I don't care how dark it is right now look to the other side because there is something after this it may be hell right now but there's something on the other side you aren't going through something in order to get to something smaller you're going through something in order to get to something bigger than what you're going through. I said it too fast. Helen Wright put it this way. There's a bright side somewhere. Yes. I want you to look at somebody. You can't take your mask off. And just, I, listen, I'm going to tell you what they're saying to you because you can't see what they're saying to you. Just look at somebody with your mask on. Tell them, don't quit. Don't quit. Yeah, come on. Don't quit. Don't quit. Now, now tell yourself, don't quit. Now, if you're watching me on Zoom, don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. If you're watching on Facebook, don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. Come on. Just say it to yourself. Don't quit. Don't quit. Yeah, yeah. There's something on the other side of what you got to face. Here's the way the book of Hebrews put it. He went through it for the joy that was set before him. See, the fellowship of his suffering means I see my cross, but I see the other side. I want you to thank God real quick that some of y'all can testify. I went through the suffering, but because of what I got when I came 
came out. I don't just thank God for coming out. I thank God for going through. Come on, I don't need all y'all. I just need about 19 of y'all. Who can say, God, I thank you for everything I had to go through because of what I got when I came on the other side. I got joy. I got peace. I got sanity. But I had to go through it. I'm done. I'm done. I'm, I'm done. It, it, I'm done. Here's the last thing. It's going to get dark. When I become the new me, because I live in resurrection power, I see exits as pathways to elevation. Okay. Exits become pathways to elevate. So, um, my late home athletics professor, Dr. Miles Jerome Jones, used to always tell us that resurrection is being that has no business being. Okay. Um, um, it's, it's, it's living that has no business living. Um, Dr. Jones used to say, resurrection is a life on the other side of what should have ended my life. Church folk don't know when to shout. That resurrection is the picture of possibility. It is the existential testimony of God's ability to bring dead things back to life. More specifically, it is God's ability. Oh, this is going to get good. Resurrection is God's ability to bring back what other people attempted to kill off. Paul said the fellowship of his suffering, being conformed to his death, that I might attain the resurrection. He ain't talking about going to heaven. No, no, I ain't what he's talking about. Um, he's talking about going through the death to get to the elevation. Um, let me tell y'all who should be shouting at home, on your lanai, uh, at your kitchen counter, in your living room, in your car, or in this sanctuary. Let me tell y'all who should have just given a good shout. And I know, you know, you got to get your body back together. I did a three-week revival, three-night revival in Houston this week, and I'm so tired right now because it's been 15, 16 months since I've done a three-night revival, and my body is burning Mac. My body is weary. I'm tired. So I know it's been 14 months since you've been in the sanctuary and you've been used to sitting in your house chilling and not having to have a whole lot of energy. But I, I need y'all to get it back real quick. Because let me tell you the folk that should be shouting. There are two groups of people that should have shouted on what I just told y'all. One group are the people who have some dead things they need God to bring back to life. You should have been shouting because you know you serve a God that can bring it back. The other group that should have shouted are those who have had some things die, but God raised it back up. Yeah, I knew that would be the group. That, that's the other group that should have been shouting that had some stuff that died, but God raised it back. You thought you were done. They thought you were done. But somewhere between Friday when they tried to kill you and Sunday, not only did God raise you, but they found out about it because you weren't where they left you y'all didn't hear what I just said they knew Jesus had risen because when they got where they left him he was no longer there see some of y'all were left in depression left in sadness left in fear left in quit but I dare you to wave your hand and say I am no longer there and folk can't figure out how they put you away but God brought you back out Okay, okay. Let me tell you how I came to this point. I came to this point. I told y'all I was in Houston, right? I was staying at, at, at the Western Post Oak. Sits right in the Galleria Mall. And right connected to the Western is the Cheesecake Factory. And so I was eating in the Cheesecake Factory. Got, got that Jamaican black pepper shrimp. And uh, no. I, I wanted to go to the mall, but I didn't want to have to, because uh, 
uh, in Houston, cheesecake, you enter, you have to go up these steps, then you sit. I don't want to have to go back down the steps, out cheesecake, walk back over to the hotel, because uh, you can get into the mall from the second floor of the Westin. So I said to my waiter, I said, hey man, um, is there a way to get into the mall from in here? And he said, yeah. Um, those of y'all that get preacher discernment going to get this and it's going to be over. He said, yeah. He said, the way to get out of here, you see those exit signs? <laughs> he said, those exit signs will get you out of here and over into where you want to be. Y'all didn't get it. See, it hit me, Pastor. We have been shortchanging the resurrection story because really the resurrection story is about an exit. Because Quinn, he didn't just get up. But he got out after he got up. Y'all, I'm, I'm done. You better go on and get your own shout. See, resurrection power means I don't have to stay stagnant. I don't have to stay stuck. Paul said, I didn't just get up, but I got out. Can I talk to y'all before I shut it down? Entrances into new seasons must be preceded by exits from old seasons. Because you can't walk into anything new being scared to walk out of something old. And I say to somebody today as I close, look for the exit signs. You want to walk into your resurrection power. Look for the resurrect exit sign. It's time to get up and it's time to get out your three days are up being down on your back it's time to get up and it's time to get out I wonder do I have any saints watching me at home or in this sanctuary that can say God I thank you you didn't just get me up but you got me out you didn't just lift me up but then you took me out and brought me to a new life because that's what God does he gets you up and then he gets you out I'm reminded of a story that I think will help me get this right the old preacher said one day death and grave had a conversation and death told the grave death I kissed him grave can you hold him and grave said to death don't you see this cemetery nobody I got was able to get away from me so death you kissed him but I know I can hold him Saturday came and death came knocking and death said grave I just want to make sure can you hold him because I heard him say if you tear down this temple I'll raise it up in three days. Grave said, look around. Adam is still here. Joseph is still here. Jacob is still here. Esther is still here. David is still here. Solomon is still here. If you kissed him, I got him. And I can hold him. But early, yes, Sunday morning, death showed back up and said, Grave, are you sure you can hold him? And Grave said, Well, something's happening down here. Something's shaking down here. He said, I don't know what's going on, but something ain't right. He said, Early this morning he didn't just get up but then he got out but grave said that ain't all he didn't get up and get out by himself he took Adam he took Joseph he took Jacob he took Abraham he took Isaac he took Moses he took Joshua he took Ruth he took Gideon he took David he took Solomon he took Isaiah he took Habakkuk he took everybody that belonged to him and 
one day when I met Jesus, he took me from where I used to be. I got to go. I ain't seen y'all in 14 months. Can I just do it for myself? Good morning, Bethel. May the Lord God bless you real good. But is there anybody in here that can help me close this sermon? Stand on your feet if you know the Lord put you up and brought you out. If you're watching on Zoom, get up off your chair. If you know the Lord got you up and brought you out. I need somebody who ain't ashamed today to wave your hand. If he got you up and brought you out. I know you can't do it. So I need your left hand and your right hand to act like y'all are neighbors. Your left hand is the neighbor to your right hand. So do me a favor. Grab your neighbor's hand and tell your neighbor neighbor. Neighbor. He got me out. Come on, that was the wrong. Take your left hand. Put it in your right hand. Touch your neighbor. Shake him and rock him. Rock him and shake him. Shake him and rock him. And tell him, neighbor. Neighbor. He got me out. He picked me up. He turned me around. He made a way out of no way. Because that's what he specializes. God specializes in getting folk up and getting folk out. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he fight your battles? Won't he make your enemies your footstool? Won't he give you joy and sorrow? Won't he give you hope for tomorrow? Won't he dry your tears? Won't he, won't he, won't he, won't he, won't he? Won't he? And because I know he gets me up because I know he brings me out I don't care how long it takes I know the Lord will bring me out and I wish I had a shouting church that can say I'm down right now but give me three days and God will raise me up give me three days and God will lift me up and how do you know I won't die like this Bishop how do you know I won't stay like this Bishop how do you know it won't end like this because one Friday they hung him high they stressed him wide he hung his head in the locks of his shoulders he died he died he died he died died didn't he die he died all night Friday he died all day Saturday but Lord have mercy I said early Sunday morning he got up with power in his hand and I I, I know if he got up I'll get up if he got out I'll get out and I I came to tell somebody I don't care how long it 
takes. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They'll mount up on wings like an eagle. They'll run and not get weary. They'll walk and not faint. And I I, I know it for myself because I came to Jesus as I was. I was weary, wounded, and sad. I found in him a resting place, and he has made me glad. I ain't preaching for y'all no more. I done had a hell of a week. I got to preach myself happy. And I I need somebody who can help me close this sermon and declare I'm on my way to higher ground. I'm on my way to my best life. I'm on my way to my greater life. And I I got to give God the praise because when I was sinking deep in sin far from the peaceful shore very deeply staying within I was sinking to rise no more but the master of the sea he had my despairing cry and I from the water he lifted me now safe am I I don't know when I'll see you again I don't know when we'll get together again but I want to tell you be not dismayed what appetite God will take care of you and I I got to let you go It's been 14 months I haven't seen you But until I see you again The Lord Bless you and keep you The Lord Make his face to shine upon you Bless me The tide That binds in Christian love the fair lordship of kin I feel like preaching I feel the Holy Ghost and I I, I got to give God up behind your mask wave your hand and say yeah yeah! 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 Amy, all right! Amy, Your healing is your exit. Your breakthrough is at the exit. Your restoration is at the exit. Your joy is at the exit. But you got to go through the fellowship of his suffering.
so that you can attain. become the you you were meant to be you weren't born to be depressed you weren't born to be sick you weren't born to be discouraged you weren't born to be broke you weren't born to be alone <laughs> resurrection power changes all of that I kept you a little longer today, but it's Easter Sunday, you yeah. You watching me on Zoom, you watching me on Facebook, I, I speak it to you today. Yeah, Deborah, I see your healing is the exit. I see you writing it. I see your Patrice healing and restoration. I, I see you, I see you, Celestine, I see you. Your joy, your peace. Keep looking for the exit signs. I, yeah, Melody, you weren't born to be alone. I, I see you writing it. I, I say to you this morning, watching on Zoom, Bernadette, Nashonda, Mia, Miss Hannah, Leisha, Walter, Wanda, Daryl. I say to all of you, look for the exit sign. Because the way out of here, Jesus, is at the exit. We got to go. I want to pray this morning. If you're watching us on stream, I want to pray for your salvation. If you're saved, I want to pray for your connection. Oh, you might be in here this morning. I'm not even going to take that for granted I'm not going to take that for granted even if you're in here this morning and if you're in here I want you to do what I'm telling everybody else to do I'm not going to ask you to come down I'm not going to ask you to walk down I'm not going to do any of that even if you're in here and I want to give you these instructions and then I'm going to pray if you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your savior you know church but you've never had change because here's the deal you can change without church but you can't maintain change without church everybody didn't meet Jesus in church some folk got witness to on the street you might be in here today and say I came to church because it was Easter my family invited me but I won't change I need change I can't just do church I gotta I got have change and as we get ready to return to church, I want to return changed. You might be saying that. You might be watching me on stream. Here's what I want you to do. Bishop, I'm not saved. I've never given Jesus my life. Or Bishop, I am saved, but I want to be a part of your church. Keep that on the screen for me. Or Bishop, I want to be part of your church, but man, I live in Africa. I live in England. I live in South America. I live in Hawaii. Doesn't matter. It's called the Bethel Experience Everywhere where you can become a virtual member of this church. If you're in the sanctuary, I want you to do what's on that screen. And if you're watching, do what's on that screen. Text TBC decision to 40691. Bishop, I'm not saved. Bishop, I want to be, even if you're in the sanctuary, I'm not asking you to walk down here. You came with your family this morning. I'm not, I'm not asking you to come down here or anything. I just want you to text TBC decision to 40691 watching on the screen and then I'm going to pray I'm going to pray if you haven't given your seed this morning I want you to go sow that seed 714 or 71 dollars and 14 cents it's my declaration seed that I found the exit and he didn't just get me up he got me out and everything we prayed for this week, Bishop, I believe it's already happened. And so, God, this morning, I thank you for change. Thank you for resurrection power. Thank you for reminding us that he didn't just get up, but you got him out. 
Thank you this morning that we're forward looking, never backward. Thank you this morning that we don't run from suffering, we run towards it because we know what's on the other side of it. And so God, I pray for somebody who needs salvation in their life. I pray for somebody this morning who is saved, but over the last year and a half during this pandemic, they just haven't been in the church. And this morning they want to make a godly connection. And I pray right now this morning that they will hit that TBC decision and text it to 40691 and let the change happen in their life. We love you today and we thank you that not only did you raise your son, but you raise us. And you help us live in resurrection power. Thank you for letting us gather. So often we take it for granted but thank you that you let us come together. Hmm. And I give your name to praise. In Jesus' name. Very quickly, listen. Don't forget midweek manna Sunday. I mean Wednesday night at 7 p.m. That's Bible study. Midweek manna at 7 p.m. Did we do communion? I'm so out of it. I don't know. Did we do communion? <laughs> I ain't seen y'all in so long. I'm, you know, I just, I'm, I'm like in another world right now. The blessing of boundaries. I'm going to conclude that series on Wednesday night. Once again, can you help me thank God first for our creative arts and worship ministry? Can you help me thank God for our production team, our audio visual team and everything they've put together? Help me thank God for Cynthia and her gifted hands volunteer ministry and our healthy Bethel ministry who was out front. And help me thank God for our baby, Jocelyn, who is doing such an amazing job. All those texts, everything creative you see that she and her team, Ronald, CJ, all of her team. I've got the greatest team on the planet. And I thank God y'all thank God for my lover thank God for your pastor come on let's celebrate her this morning thank God for her now I can't I can't hug and kiss none of y'all except my family but I'll see them at dinner so for every congresswoman I love you baby and I am so just just stand here for me I can't we can't do I've talked to her I've talked to her I was, I, I was in the secret when they went trying to find and they didn't know she was like Jesus. They went looking for her and she was not there. Let's celebrate our congresswoman. Uh -huh. I love each and every one of you and thank God for you. Thank God for how you pray for me. Thank God for how you lift me and encourage me. Y'all keep that going. I need it. Y'all gonna sing us out of here with that. Are the announcements gonna play for those? So if you're watching stream, all of our announcements are going, hey, we getting ready to start a new segment. I'll tell you about it next Sunday with our announcements. Choir's gonna sing us out of here. You can sit if you want, but be safe. Don't be touching and hugging nobody. And I think we got hand sanitizer outside. You can get that as well. Y'all know what I do. Peace.